Hey everybody, I'm Stacy J. And I'm Chuck Duran. Welcome to another episode of VO Buzz Weekly. That's right. And we're back like Jack Black at the racetrack with EG Daily. How do you balance being a mom and and working so much? Um, you know We think you balance it by the way. She's going, Am I balancing it? Yeah. yeah. We we think you're it. We, you know, we think actually, you are. you know, there's a lot of time. There's like I mean a voice job takes you know, you know. I do a voice job, sometimes it takes me 15 minutes. Yeah. The longest part of the job is driving there and back. Mm. So I, what I've always tried to do was make sure that I was known as the mom that would breastfeed during sessions. Like I would do sessions where they didn't see me because they were phone patched from like Canada oh, yeah, or something. Oh yeah, perfect. And I'd be in the studio <laughs> and then I'd do my car commercial or whatever it was, like Lexus car. <laughs> and then all of a sudden Lexus. at the end of the commercial, they, they would be, okay, that was great, thanks. And then you'd hear, and that was... <laughs> The baby on the boob. So I was the mom that just brought my kid in everywhere, yeah. and, and I would have someone with me, and I would do a session, and then I'd be like, I got to nurse my kid, and I would leave the session for a second, and everybody was really respectful of that. So mm -hmm. I just made sure that it all tied in together. You know, I didn't want to be uh, the mom that left the kid at home and came home eight hours later. Yeah. That wasn't an option for mm -hmm. me. So everything worked itself out. Voiceovers was amazing because it let me just bring my kid. It was short sessions, and then mm -hmm. I'd just have someone with me, and then... If I did get a movie, I honestly stopped doing like long distance faraway movies for a while when my kids were little because I didn't want to leave them. Mm -hmm. I didn't mm -hmm. want to do that. I couldn't. It hurt. Yeah. Yeah. But um, then when it was time, I would leave. You know, it was like I kind of had a, a feel for when I could leave them for a period of time. And um, I had a good network of people that would help me. Mm -hmm. So I just sort of like, I just think there's always a lot of time. There's a lot of time, you know, yeah. in yeah. our business. Yeah. I mean, it's probably cool to leave them once they're like two or three months old. I kind of right? need a break every once in a while. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, they can watch themselves at two months. You, know, you can yeah. turn on a yeah. TV by then. Yeah. You know, you're totally cool. And now there's Skype. So like I went to Australia for a month and that was the longest I'd ever left my kids. Mm. But they were... 12 and something else yeah. yeah and we would Skype every day I would Skype them from Australia and that was just like when I did Happy Feet 2 nice mm -hmm. nice woohoo yeah okay <laughs> this weekend, okay. Stacy and I, Stacy's like, Chuck, come over here. You have to sit down and you have oh, no. to watch this, okay. okay? And so what we did was we had an EG Daily Marathon, all okay? Right. We were on your site. We were on YouTube. And we're listening to all these songs and I you think, singing. Yeah. And I completely just flipped wow. out. I, can't, I, I mean, I couldn't believe how great you are. Wow, thank you. You know, Whitney Houston, eat your heart out. No. <laughs> um, no, I'm just kidding. Wow. But, uh, but and there's this one song. What was the song that I loved? Somebody's Loving You. Somebody's Loving You. Loving you. You can see me watching you. You just don't know. You're not alone. There's always somebody watching. Someone who cares. Someone who's love. Loving you. Voice, it's about the music, the message. It's just, it's not like cluttered with. I wrote all this, it because it was, it you know. was really, it was like, like the war was happening. Yeah. yeah. Was you're hearing about these young boys getting killed, and then I wrote it about just humanity, just like what was going on, and a lot of mm -hmm. difficulties, and everybody's having financial problems, and people were cracking up, and yeah. Like really, I really felt like there was a lot of, there's a lot of people in the world lately that were just having a lot of pain, mm -hmm. more than I remember, and I just thought that's a simple song about. No matter what kind of pain, I actually wrote. You know what I wrote that song about? I'll tell you. Please tell, tell us. Tell what I wrote about. <laughs> it was all that, and then I had this neighbor that lived across the street, and his name was Greg. He's this beautiful man, and he used to come visit me, and he wore these little paper slippers, and he would shuffle across the street to me. <laughs> and I love Greg, and I call him my boyfriend. And I would tell his wife, "Is my boyfriend around?" And she would be like, "No, Greg, blah, blah, you know, whatever." And then one day Greg disappeared, and I was like, "Where's my boyfriend? I mean, your husband." And then she'd say, oh, he's not doing so well. And then the mm. next thing I found out, he passed away. And, mm. and it was sad because he was this beautiful, young-spirited man. And, and, uh, and I watched her, like, I watched her. It was her only partner for 60 years. I mean, yeah. I, I watched her alone, and I watched her not be able to live alone in, without him. I watched her mm. suffering, you know, going to the mailbox. And, you know, I just, I don't know. I just, and I just remember thinking, you know, even when people think they're alone, you know, really think you're alone, there's always somebody that's watching you. Yeah. There's always somebody. Even if you think you're the only person around and you're suffering by yourself, there's always somebody out there that can relate and that's there for you. And so I kind of felt like that's what happened with this woman. And, you know, and there was like young boys or kids out fighting wars that were alone thinking nobody cared. Mm -hmm. But there were people that cared. And yeah. so that's what that song came from. And it's called 
It's called Somebody's Loving You, and it, it is more recent. And the video just kind of depicts, you know, yeah. just different little vin yeah. vignettes of just yeah. life and things happening and that you're not alone. So I really, yeah, that song But I love the too. video, too, because it's like your voice, the, the lyrics, it, is the star. That It's, it's oh. not, it's, yeah. the imagery is so complimentary yes. to the music. It doesn't get overshadowed, yes. so. Yay. I, um, Bravo, I did that with my sister. Buddy. Jim yeah. Kaufman. Jim Kaufman's a great record producer, and mm -hmm. he and I produced a bunch of new tracks, and that's one of them. And he's he's in the uh, actually he's in the wait video that I did, but he's a really is he talented. the one at the door? Yeah, he's the guy yeah. at the door, the crazy mad scientist yeah. guy. He's super talented, and um, he and I I met him on a fluke too. He I kept driving by this house in my neighborhood, and I would see these guys hanging out, and I'd see these anvil cases all the time. I was like, there's something going on in that house, and I'm going to figure it out. And, <laughs> Wait, and I, what's happening in my yeah. neighborhood? <laughs> He's just a stalker. Yeah, I stalked those guys, and they were really cute, too. So I pulled up, and I was like, what's going on in this house? And he goes, oh, there's a studio here. And I was like, really? Hmm. That's like six doors from my house. Wow. So I pulled over one day, and I met the guy, Jim, and we just connected, and we ended up producing this whole little track of new songs that I did called The New Collection. And... And I ended up becoming good friends with him. We've done some live shows, and we did this song called Wait mm -hmm. that you can mm -hmm. find on YouTube, mm -hmm. which is a really cool yeah. track. Yeah, totally. And he yeah. and I wrote that together. And Great shoes. It. Yeah, right? She remembers Great everything. Shoes. I got a shoe thing. I like shoes. So those I was are, like, oh, I even paused it. I'm like, yeah, those, mm, are, cool. those are good yeah, shoes. They're really wacky. They're Maxfield, yeah. some crazy shoe. But yeah. anyway, he's really talented, so I like people to know Jim Kaufman. Look yeah. for him. Yeah. So how can people get your music? You know, you can go to um, iTunes, um, mm -hmm. just go to EG Daily. You can go to egdaily.com, and then there's, like, some of the records are, you can click on. It'll send you to Amazon or iTunes, but yeah. cool. it's out there. Go to YouTube, and um, there's a ton of videos. You know, just look up EG Daily videos. Yeah. Go look up Somebody's Loving You, look up Wait, and then it'll pull up just a ton of videos, mm -hmm. live stuff, me, yeah. on piano, just just raw and also high end videos that are Absolutely. Done. Yeah. You can have your own yeah. EG Daily Marathon. You, yes. How's that? And you that? want and you want to get some popcorn. No, seriously. <laughs> oh, so talented. So cool. Unbelievable. Raw, Thanks. That's awesome. Um do you have any current projects going on that you want to talk about? Um you know, like I said, on camera getting more voice, people to see the like somebody's loving you away. Mm -hmm. It's cool. Those are more current and then I did do a movie in Oklahoma called Yellow that Nick Esfetti's directed, and that's coming out. It's, mm -hmm. I think it just got in the Toronto Film Festival, and that's like with Melanie Griffith and Jenna Rollins. It's like a great cast, and mm -hmm. I was really, I loved it. I play a crazy character in that, so that's coming out. I'm on a bunch of new other shows like Curious George. Um, yeah. I, I play Steve on that, and I do uh, Pound Puppies, and I do a bunch of characters on that, Dolly and a bunch of random characters, but... I've always got something running. Um, I probably would have to think about it because it's hard for me to remember what yeah. exactly is going on. I have a bunch of shows that I've done lately, yeah. but I don't remember actually. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're just going to have to go on the line and freaking find it. Because sometimes I go on IMDb and I'm like, I know, you're like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. I'm like thinking, I don't feel like I've worked for much. Since and then I look on IMDb and I was like, post production, pre production, oh, pre production. Oh. And I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, That's oh, how she figures out when she needs a vacation. That's her. Yeah. It's like, damn, I've been busy. I Every need to sixth do. project, yeah. I'm going to take a look at that. Yeah. Did you have any mentors or heroes in the business that really inspired you it, along the way? I mean, it depends. Like, if you're asking me in music, like, with music, I was a big fan of, like, Tina Turner and Rod Stewart and, mm -hmm. you know, Aretha Franklin. And, you know, I was a big fan of, like, the Raspy Singers because that's mm -hmm. kind of how my voice went mm -hmm. a bit. But um, I, I'm a really big fan of, like, going way back because my brothers and sisters are older and so I was a big fan of like those guitar simple songs like James Taylor and mm -hmm. you know those like pretty uh, just play guitar yeah. and sing stuff you know I'm a yeah. big fan of like like I'm trying to think of what bands I like now like I, I'm a, I love Coltrane I mean I mean Coldplay and I like Train I mean, Train mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I, I love Train I love them too Train's and great the mashup Quite band soon. is Coltrane yeah. but yeah, see, I, like Coltrane, things like, I like things like Mumford is that Mumford and Sons yeah that band and then I, I'm a huge country music fan. I mm -hmm. mean, if you come into my car, I'm, I'm, my kids are always like, Mom, turn it down. It's like yeah. country music at school. They make me turn it down because I'm like, here and here and here and here, you know. But I'm a huge fan. It's of, the, like, but the music. lyrics, I mean, I, it's just, it, they're about the songs. Are so You can't beat But the that's lyrics. what I do. No, you can't. No, you can't. That's the kind of music that I think, if you were to leave me alone in a room or on mm -hmm. an island, that's what I write. I write songs that mean something, that mm -hmm. are coming from my own yeah. experiences that I think are about life. And... So I, I really appreciate Taylor Swift. I think she's super talented that mm -hmm. for 
starting so young and being such a talented writer. Yeah. So I'm a big fan of like artists who can really write and really do their music and really sing and you know, as opposed to the ones that are completely they have the team around them, mm -hmm. they can't sing, so they get you know, people to overdub them. And, right. You know, I'm a fan of people who can really do their thing, you know. Well, and Definitely. it's great when you really have a singer-songwriter, you can see the progression of yeah. as they're growing yeah. up and as their yeah. life is changing. Well, I would say music. my my albums are all autobiographical. Mm -hmm. They're all, every album was like exactly what I've been going through and mm. I just put it all in there. And yeah. So it's like, oh yeah, that was a tough time. Love it. Yeah. It's like I'm, therapy to music. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And like for this tough, exactly, like this economy and watching all these people suffering in the last couple of years. I mean, I've never seen so much anxiety in my life. Yeah. With people. And I had this whole series of songs that came out from it, this, the new collection one and Somebody's Loving You. Mm -hmm. And there was a song called Gray that I wrote that's all about, you know. Gray? It's called Gray. Yeah. Gray. And it's all about, you know, walking through landmines and just mm -hmm. trying to dodge bullets all the time. Mm -hmm. And you feel like you're, the minute you get yourself through something, then something else hits you. And it's like, I've seen a lot of people doing that yeah. in the last couple of years. So, you know, I'm happy that I kind of can document what, what's going on because then people go, oh, my God, I felt that too. And I was like, great. That's what yeah. it's about. I'd like to know, I'm sure they would like to know even more, What what is your favorite character role in animation that you've ever played? Mm. Your personal favorite. I, I really like doing Baby Mumble in the first Happy Feet movie mm. because he was so darling. Um, I would say Baby Mumble. I would say Tommy Pickles because he was really, I mean, I, I would say the first um, batch of years were my favorite when the Rugrats were really tiny yeah. babies, you mm -hmm. know. Um, so I would say those two. What, what did like they the sound babies. like? Can you give us an example? Well, I mean, like, Baby Mumble is like, F -f 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 I'm happy, pa. He's real tiny. Yeah. And then Tommy is like, <laughs> a baby gotta do what a baby gotta do, you know, like just cute and yeah, they're so innocent cute. and stuff. So I like doing those characters. And then I did a character in a show where I played a really sexy germ who infected people. <laughs> <laughs> I liked her. Yeah. Really like a vixen. I liked her. Yeah, she was she, like a diva germ. She was a diva vixen, and she infected people with a cold. It was really cute. So, oh, that's fun. Yeah, I mean, there's trip. always other shows that come up where I, would, I did something. Um, actually, I think this week, maybe this week. That's only. It's only. I think I did it at the end of last week, but it was this crazy character that I had never done. Actually, I was like, this kind of Latin, funny, outrageous mother, and. I loved doing it, and so that was like a new one for me that I hadn't actually done before, but it was a fun character, yeah. Wow, that's cool. Yeah. Well, on that topic, yeah. how do you, like, when you're trying to develop a new character, or maybe yeah. you get an audition for something, and then, you know, you have a picture, is there, is there a process that you go through to, like, get something out, or you just go for it? For an audition, you mean? Yeah. You know, they basically will sometimes just give a little, either a little description, or they show a little photograph of the character. Right. And I tend to usually just go with the voice that comes out of me first. Mm -hmm. and it usually is the right one. I look at the picture. I come up with the voice. And sometimes they might say, love that. Can you make him sound a little smarter or make her sound a little heavier or bigger or a little older or younger? So basically what I do is I just I, I find the voice and then they dial me a little bit closer to what they're looking for. But uh, it's usually for me like a first instinct thing. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. It that's works. good. I mean, obviously, you use your voice so much between acting and singing. How do you, do you have any rituals or warm-ups that you do to take care of yourself? Um, Think about it and don't say no. You yeah, can no. say no. <laughs> She's a singer. I don't have any of those things like don't no, eat no. cheese, don't drink milk. I don't do yeah. any of that. I don't believe in yeah. any of that. I just, I think that if you're really tired and you're not getting enough rest, then you tend to be a little, your adrenals are a little low, mm -hmm. and then you tend to hurt your voice a little if you... Or using it crazy, but I use my voice so much that it almost feels like my cords are fatter than everybody else's because mm. they're just so developed yeah. that they're really strong. And so I would say just making sure that I'm not like not getting enough sleep, you know, too many, mm -hmm. too long, mm. you know, and when I'm really tired and my adrenals are really shot, not pushing it too much is that's when I know I kind of yeah. I wear it a little bit. But I, I don't have a lot of rituals. I mean, before I sing, I like to warm up. You know, I like to do some warm ups. I took singing my whole life, so I like. Yeah. You know, I just think warming up is good. Just like when you're at a gym or at a dance class, you warm up first. So, yeah. you know, I'm, I think all that's important, you know, but I don't have any big beliefs like do drops under my tongue and drink milk with toad lips inside of it for, you know, before you do your thing. You know, I don't yeah. have any of that. Yeah. <laughs> you don't even go like... You just get a good night's sleep. Yeah, just a good night's sleep. And, yeah. and you know, even... <laughs> so when I did an album in Germany and I worked with that Harold Foltemeyer producer who did dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun, yeah. that Axel F theme song, 
and I was I was this when I was a lot younger and he would just say he would call me the radio he's like you're the radio daily and I was like why he's like because I just turn you on mm -hmm. and just dial you in and, yeah, yeah. you know and to me that was a big compliment because I think I use it so much it's ready to go a lot of the time yeah that's cool yeah right on that's kind of like Jesse Jess is like that. Yeah. yeah. Although, although he's he does warm up. He actually yeah, I like he has his yeah. little tape. You know, yeah. that he has on his f iPhone. Yeah, and stuff. yeah, yeah. I do too. Yeah. Yeah. I do too. My voice is just better. You warm is, up, it's better. Is yeah. there anything that you won't do? I mean, some people say they won't scream, or is there anything that you really won't do? Or? I will scream. Yeah. She's a screamer. Especially if I'm mad. Right. No. <laughs> Don't I, get mad. I, um, for scale plus ten, will you scream though? I will scream. <laughs> <laughs> I. Um, I scream, you know, I do all that stuff. Usually if it's a session where I've done some sessions where it was all screaming. Yeah. And I'll like say, can we do the softer lines first and we'll do the right. screaming later. Yeah. When I did, um, was it Lorenzo's Oil was mm -hmm. a movie that I did where I redid the lead actor kid's voice in the movie and I had to do a lot of screaming because the kid at one point starts to lose his speech and he starts, yeah. he's, he becomes ill and so I redid the kid's voice and there were times where the director would lie me on the floor and he would like pump my stomach while I'd be like, ah, you know, screaming and, you know, and that was crazy. Or like when I did Froggy's voice on the Little Rascal movie, because mm -hmm. I redid the kid's voice for that. And that, that was one of the voices that, that hurt my voice that I wouldn't like to do over for too long of a period. Because mm -hmm. it's like, what's the high side be? And it's like a really ripping kind yeah. of yeah. voice. So, you know, really, I don't really have, yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What else you got? Um, you've done a lot of soundtrack work. Yeah. Um, That's my favorite thing. Yeah. What I'm do you like about of, it? I'm a big fan of music that moves you without mm -hmm. you having to think about it. Like, I love to feel without thinking. I like to just put a song on it and just start feeling beautiful or sad or emotional or happy. You know, to me, music moves you. So if you have a great piece of music in a stupid scene, it'll make you feel something. If you have a great scene and you put beautiful music to it, it'll make you really rock. Yeah. So music, music to me, soundtrack music, score, soundtrack music just makes you feel without thinking. Mm -hmm. How great is that? Because yeah. I think we think too much. So it's nice to not think so much and just yeah. feel. Yeah. So the boy Very voice. Well yeah. So the boy voices are yeah. clearly. My forte? Yeah. Well, the, <laughs> no. I'm not, I'm not <laughs> limiting you, but I mean, that certainly is, uh, you are one of the go-to boy voice actors yeah so I, think so. I do a lot of boy voices mm -hmm. yeah was that something that you that you became aware of or that you became aware of because that's where you were yeah i had led. no idea and no, mm -hmm. i had no idea about any of it i mean people yeah. just start hiring me and i'd be like really yeah okay you know so i i had no idea i, I didn't know that i was going to do more boys i didn't know that i could really do boys that well i just really watched and observed boys and was able mm -hmm. to capture their you know, their sort of attitude and stuff like that. Right. You know, I don't know where it came from. I don't know why. It yeah. Just, I don't know how. I don't know how. What, what am I doing here? How did I get here? <laughs> she doesn't we even saw know you who walking she down is the right now because <laughs> of the uh, whiskey she's been <laughs> pounding down. No, just um. <laughs> Do you ever, do you ever, don't start rumors, Chuck. Do you ever get nervous or anxious before a session or? No. Uh, not really. I don't really, like before voiceover session or singing mm -hmm. session, not really. And live, I mean, I get a little butterfly sometimes for a live thing if I haven't been doing a lot of live lately, mm -hmm. but I actually really love it. I, I, get, I love it. And I almost feel like it's, I'm at home when I'm doing, when I'm on a, a live show, I just feel like, oh, I'm at home and I have my family, my fans yeah. and my family there. Yeah. I just feel like, you know, I just, the more connected I am to myself, the more I can connect to them and the more they connect to me and we're just like this. Well, in that real-time connection, yeah, I really you can't love beat that. it. I just love that. So, you know, I, a little butterfly sometimes or, you know, I think I get nervous more with on-camera auditions. That's mm. where I might get yeah. a little nervous. I don't like to do those. I'd rather just book the job and do the job because I'm a yeah. better actor when you just don't make me have to yeah. have well, to like do that. Do you know that you're on camera right now? <laughs> <laughs> she got the part, though. She is easy daily. She got daily. the part. <laughs> We're going to book her. <laughs> Yeah. Um, You're playing E.G. Daly oh very God. well. Thank you. Oh, great. <laughs> Doing very well. Gonna, I'm good at that. All right. Uh-oh. It's time it's for time. what if. Dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> Pick a number between 5 and 129. Just tell you? Yeah. Six. Six. All it's right. not a magic trick. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Now pick a number between 1 and 4. Three. Three. 
If you could have overheard a specific conversation yeah. between any two people, okay. which would it be? <laughs> she doesn't like Monica this. Lewinsky and and, <laughs> and, and Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I would have Winner! Liked I would have liked oh that my god. That would that would actually be a pretty interesting Would there have been conversation? That's the real question. Well, weather. there would have been <laughs> some first. Yeah, there would have been a little conversation. And I would have liked that conversation. That's a good one. That's so funny. That's awesome. You are crazy. Thank girl. you for playing. Yeah, yeah, right? That's a good um, one. So, I, I, and think about this, okay? Because <laughs> this is deep. I'm going to take you deep, all right? <laughs> Let's do it. Um, what would you say to your 20 year old self? About what? About just, if you were back to you were 20, what, you, what would you tell yourself today that would just make everything that much better? I would say just relax, because it's all just, you're going to go there anyway, and so just enjoy the ride, you know? That's what I would say. That's what I wanted to hear, actually. I, I mean, love that's it. Cool. I to say, yeah, Put it there, out. baby. Brilliant. Yeah, Man. brilliant. Hey, and well, I would also tell you guys, go to... Uh, Go to, I just started doing it, the Twitter thing, and if you're mm -hmm. interested, it's Real EG Daily, at Real EG Daily. Okay. So, start to log on. We're just starting to get it rolling, and it's just new, but, and there's also EG Daily on Facebook, too. Yeah. The official, you can go and like that. We're just starting that one. Okay. I have one that's, uh, was a personal one that turned into a fan one, so mm -hmm. it's filled, but anyway. Yeah. 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 We don't want no filled pages now. Yeah. Um, cool. So now you guys know how to get a hold of EG. Yeah. yeah. And definitely check out her website and check Absolutely. out her music and all that good stuff. Yeah. She's amazing. You guys will freak out. Oh. EG, thank you so much for coming on Thanks, Video Buzz EG. Weekly, sharing with us, nice sharing you with your fans you. out there. Nice to see you. And uh, you rock, girl. Thank you. Mwah. Continued success. You're lovely. We love you. Thank You're you. You're welcome here anytime. You know what I love about EG Daily? I wonder if it's the same thing I love about her. She's so cool, she's so down to earth, mm -hmm. she's so unbelievably talented, but she doesn't act like it. I know. And when I was talking about the marathon that Stacy and I had listening to her music on YouTube, and all, we totally did that. Yeah. And if you do it, you will freak out like we did, yeah. I'm telling you. Support her music, download it on iTunes, buy her CDs, she's really incredible. Absolutely. That concludes part two with EG Daily, but lucky for you, we'll be back next week with another awesome episode of VO Buzz Weekly. Yes, we will, so send us your questions and comments, plus like us on Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest at VO Buzz Weekly. Take care, everybody, and just remember, you, you always, always have time, time for a little buzz. buzz.